of the first urban battles took place here in Jerusalem and set the stage for future battles. CBN Scott Ross talked with an IDF commander about the impact still felt 50 years later. The 55th Paratroopers Brigade still serves as a reserve unit today as it did in the 1967 battle for Jerusalem. We're part of the 98th Division, which is the more or less the equivalent of the 101st Airborne Division in the U.S. Army. Lieutenant Colonel Anshel Pfeffer commands the 28th Reserve Battalion of the 55th Brigade. We do the most interesting and most dangerous and most uh, uh, challenging uh, missions in, in the IDF, so I believe. And as paratroopers, we live up to our code, walking on our feet in the night um, quietly and, and hitting the enemy wherever he is without him knowing about us in advance. Pfeffer, a high-tech executive, took me through the trenches at Ammunition Hill, where battalion soldiers fought for Jerusalem 50 years ago. Well, Ammunition Hill was the bunker of the Jordanian um, police academy, which is just behind us. And the police academy was the main objective of that specific battle before they continued towards the old city. And this was, uh, what, day two of a six-day war? Day two. After taking the police academy, they advanced towards, it's called today the Ammunition Hill, and they spent many, many hours trying to advance from trench to trench. How many men were here fighting? They began almost 200, and very, very few remained standing at the end of the battle. My, my, my. And, but they weren't trained for this kind of warfare, no, were they? They were very surprised. They described it as a very big disappointment, not being parachuted to fight the Egyptians, but then, of course, it became one of the most important battles in Israeli history. The battle specifically here, but also in other places in Jerusalem, was all done in very improvised Israeli-type uh, warfare. It's hard to understand how men with equipment on their backs, I assume, yep. rifles, grenades, whatever other equipment they had, how did they make it through these narrow, narrow trenches to take the enemy on. It's a, very, it's a very good question. Unfortunately, uh, many of them had to climb above, and the stories uh, describe young soldiers telling their commanders, I'm gonna go up with my uh, machine gun, and as you're walking down in the trench, I'll go on top. And every time they advanced one, two, three, five feet, and then the next guy climbed up and, and continued it. Uh, the previous one was hit, and that's how they managed to advance. Some of them pulled back the, the injured towards the injured uh, um, facility with the doctors behind, but they had to keep advancing. I can stand here as uh, an American and look at our history and talk about Revolutionary War, Civil War, that's hundreds of years ago. Right. This is 50 years ago. Indeed. And you, you know, I don't want to get overly dramatic, how can you? But this is hallowed ground. Do you see it that way? Yes, yes it is. This ground is holy ground as far as we, the way we see it, because our friends, our comrades fell here. It's some place we respect very much. As you can see, it became a national monument. Standing by the half-track that barreled through Lion's Gate into the old city, Pfeffer told me of their honor in continuing the heritage of those who have gone before them. Have you talked to any of the men who fought and uh, some of your fathers, grandfathers, and talk to them about their emotion of that moment? Yeah, it's important to mention. We, every year on uh, the Six Day War uh, Commemoration Day, we meet with our predecessors. We also remember the fallen and we talk to them. It's a very strong part of our heritage. What motivated these men? At the end of the day, it's fighting with your friends, with your comrades, what they call brothers in arms, and uh, that's what makes people at the end of the day uh, rise up towards enemy fire and, and, and advance. The, the big vision, the, the mission, conquering uh, Jerusalem, all that, it's important. But it, at the end of the, the moment when you uh, rise up towards the fire, it's, it's for your friends. Are you men motivated like that today? We believe so. We look up to them. Today's young soldiers are as, both in their professionalism and also in their values, are as good as we were then. Pfeffer, who commands about 700 reserves, told me how important the lessons of that war are to soldiers today. How has the past affected the future, the training of the men now? The Battle for Jerusalem in 1967 was one of the first battles in, in uh, urban warfare. And if you look around today, both in the IDF and also the U.S. Army and any other Western Army, the challenge of fighting terrorists and other organizations which are fighting from within civilian and, and urban warfare environments has become the most common part of warfare, and we're, we're learning. 
But even today, you're surrounded by people that want to destroy you, that want to annihilate you, wipe you off the map, drive you into the sea. Your existence is questioned. So do you live in a defensive posture or do people live in fear? I'm a reserve soldier. Uh, right. Eighty percent of my time I'm with my family, with my, at my work, uh, enjoying life, having a great time. And I think most of Israelis live a peaceful, very happy, uh, I'd say Western-like uh, uh, lifestyle. Every couple of years, we have uh, a few weeks of tension and we, they know we're here to, to defend them. And uh, now it's our turn. Scott Ross for CBN News at Ammunition Hill in Jerusalem.